A recent report on National Public Radio said that Florida has the most new cases of HIV in the country, and the Metro Orlando area has the second highest in the state of Florida. Now, most of us probably thought these numbers were finally going down due to the fact that perhaps the media have not been reporting on the topic as much. What is our community doing to educate and inform the public? We're going to find out on this special edition of Healthy Connections. Hello, I'm Annetta Wilson, your host. Healthy Connections is a show dedicated to exploring a wide variety of topics, from prenatal care to Alzheimer's disease. And we do so with a wide variety of perspectives, from the professionals that help treat the syndromes to everyday people like you and me who may have personal experience dealing with these topics on a first-hand basis. Stay tuned for Healthy Connections. We're joined by Dr. Tenyade Fan of the Florida Department of Health in Orange County. She's here to start our discussion about HIV. Welcome, Dr. Fan. Thank you for having me. Now, your role with the Department of Health mm -hmm. is as it relates to HIV AIDS. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, essentially, I oversee one of the largest HIV primary care uh, clinics in the state of Florida and also in the United States, we have approximately 2,600 HIV positive patients, which is by far the largest government provider, government healthcare provider of HIV treatment and care in the country. Why are the numbers so high in Florida? Is there something unique to this state? To what do you attribute that? You know, I think the uh, explanation is complicated. I think it's a multifactorial explanation. I think particularly in Orange County because of the influx of people coming to the various amusement parks and from other everywhere. from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I think that that's contributing to the numbers that we're seeing especially over the last 3 years where we've seen a steady increase of about 18% roughly in the number of newly diagnosed HIV uh, cases. But the other factor to take into consideration is when you have a large tourism industry, that's also going to attract people here to work. Okay. So we're getting people from all over the country also uh, coming here compounded by the fact that you have people coming from Puerto Rico and all over the world to work here and live here. Um, and, you know, an interesting thing, I've been in Orlando now for about eight months. Uh, as quiet as it's kept, there's a really serious sexual tourism industry, underground sexual tourism industry here in or the Orlando region. Mm, that's a contributing factor yeah, as well, but, kind of an underground industry. So, um, for, you know, the whole HIV AIDS conversation has mm -hmm. not really been had on a national scale sure. for a while. So c let's kind of go back and give everybody a review. Sure. What is HIV? What is AIDS? How is it transmitted? So first, okay. what is HIV? Well, HIV is an infection that is caused by a virus called the human immunodeficiency virus, okay? This virus basically takes over your immune system and over a period of time, if you are not on medication, the HIV infection can turn into the disease otherwise known as AIDS. And AIDS, basically, your immune system is attacked, it's weakened, and so you become more susceptible to infections that normally you wouldn't get. Uh, you also become more susceptible to cancers, and if left untreated, eventually you will die. Contrary to popular belief, there is no cure for HIV or AIDS. Now, AIDS used to be considered a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Is it still? Well, you know, we've made significant medical advances, particularly in the area of medications. You know, when HIV first came to this country and the world back in 1981, there was only one medication. And now we have a plethora of medications thanks to medical technology. And these new medications have made it such that if you take the medicines, you can live with HIV and even AIDS for a very long time. Okay. Uh, one 
public figure that I like to remind people of is Magic Johnson, for example. Um, he is not cured, pro contrary to popular belief. Uh, there was some misinformation given out about 10 years ago that he was cured, which is inaccurate. Uh, his viral load was undetectable. And the viral load is basically a measure that allows us to see how aggressive the HIV virus is reproducing. And so when we say that your viral load is undetectable, that means that in one milliliter of blood, you have less than 10 thousand copies of the HIV virus okay. which can't be picked up by the test so the test comes back as negative oh, I see but the virus never really goes away it's just the levels are so low and and as a part of the advance we now have strong research and evidence that shows that if your virus level is low you have a, a, a lower infectivity rate okay and, and that's what we're really excited about. So to answer your original question, no, HIV and AIDS no longer has to be a death sentence because of the medications and because of also new knowledge about how to optimally take care of someone who is living with HIV. And yet the numbers in Florida are extraordinarily high, especially mm -hmm. in Orange County, Hillsborough County, and Dade County. Right. Uh, as you look at the statistics and, and the research. Why are those numbers through the roof? Well, you know... Is um, it that people aren't getting tested or...? That, that's part, that's part of, of the explanation. I think that uh, this country needs to refocus on prevention and part of prevention is testing. But the new agenda in the world is that we're going to eradicate AIDS through what we call treatment is the new prevention. Okay. So through secondary prevention of new HIV infections, that's how we're going to wipe out AIDS by 2025. But well, in order, go ahead. Let's talk about real quick, what are the symptoms okay. and, and who should get tested? Well, you know, that has changed drastically over the years. Uh, my advice is that everyone who is sexually active should be tested for HIV periodically. Uh, I think that because the face of HIV has changed so drastically, it's no longer um, people who are engaging in uh, unsafe sex. It's really everyone, and when we say everyone, we're talking about people from, you know, ages 12 on up. Because we're also seeing an increase in senior citizens or seniors that are age 50 and older. So I think that. Um, you know, HIV is a very tricky virus, and as a result, some people don't have symptoms at all. Mm. And then you have some people who have symptoms that are similar to the flu, where they feel tired, malaised. They may feel as if, um, you know, they have headaches, or they may have swollen lymph glands, or um, some people may have diarrhea, uh, some people may have weight loss, uh, but those two particular signs and symptoms are evidence of a more advanced stage of HIV infection, whereas when you first become infected with HIV, you develop what we call an acute prodromal syndrome, which is like a flu-like syndrome. So, so the problem with that is when people get newly infected with HIV, they think they just have the flu. Uh, so, so go and get tested if you're sexually active. Does yeah, the health department do the testing? Yes, we actually do offer free HIV testing Monday through Friday from 7.30 in the morning until 4.30. Uh, you come to the 832 West Central Boulevard location on the first floor in our uh, preventative services clinic, and we will perform the HIV test. It's a rapid ex test where you leave within 20 minutes and you know your results. And uh, But the big push, as I've said, is really getting people into uh, treatment. That is the key to living long. And we at the health department are really not only trying to increase our testing, but the intention is to find people who are positive, who may not have known they were positive. Dr. Fan, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. And when we come back, we're going to find out what services are available in this area for people with HIV AIDS. Don't go away.
Heart of Florida United Way is Central Florida's most comprehensive and largest funder for the region's most critical health and human service programs. Here to talk more about that and the HIV AIDS programs offered by the Heart of Florida United Way is Enid Devine. Enid, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, we've heard about United Way, but for those people who aren't quite sure what you do, mm -hmm. kind of give us the, the elevator pitch The version. elevator pitch. Well, our mission statement is to mobilize the caring power of our communities, and we do that through collaborations with different entities, whether they're government or other agencies. Um, for the HIV AIDS program, we are funded through the state of Florida, and we are called a lead agency, and what we do is we in turn turn around and we subcontract with a eight aid service organizations, or what we call ASOs, in Orange, Osceola, Seminole, and Brevard counties. So you're kind of like the, the one place people need to come, and then from there, you can direct them to right. the services. They can in call the us, right, and we'll direct them, but normally we have an eligibility process. If someone finds out, they get tested and they find out that they're HIV positive. They can go to a non-medical case manager, which we have posted in, in the health departments and at some of the other agencies. They go through the eligibility process. If they fall between zero and 400% of the federal poverty level and qualify, those non-medical case managers will direct them to the agencies, whether they need medical, dental, food, transportation. They need to be case managed. It depends on the assessment that they're given and at what level they're at. Mm -hmm. Some people are pretty empowered and take care of things themselves and move along and others need a little more guidance. Now is there a, can you describe a typical uh, person who comes in for services as it relates to HIV AIDS or does it cross racial boundaries, age boundaries, socioeconomic boundaries? Yes, everything. Okay. It could be anyone. They just found out, a lot of people are in denial, so we try to get them through the eligibility process and into case management so that we can deal with that. We want to put them on their medications as soon as possible. We don't like them to wait because mm -hmm. the quicker you can get on your meds, the better off you are for. Walk us through the process. When someone gets a diagnosis mm -hmm. and then they walk through your doors, what happens after that? Well, if they walk through our doors or they call us, I will direct them to one of the eight agencies closest to where they live. I ask them where they live, what county they're in, and then I try to tell them, well, you need to take certain paperwork with you um, and direct them, give them a name, hook them with someone so that they know who they're looking for when they get there. They don't just walk into the health department or walk into an agency and just kind of stand there not really knowing where they're going. No, you want to talk to John Smith okay. at this agency and tell them this is what you're looking for so they can... How can the community at large help you do more of what you do for people who have gotten that diagnosis and are living with Ooh. HIV AIDS. Let's see, they could probably be a little more compassionate. A lot Say of people- about that. A little compassionate, it's really hard. I think a lot of people have s certain ideas of what an HIV AIDS consumer is. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't, ha it's, there's no socioeconomic boundaries, there's no race boundaries. Right now, the age group women over 50, it's on the rise. In the Hispanic population and the women, it's on the rise. So what do you attribute that to? Well, I think the over 50 group, mm -hmm. a lot of them find themselves newly widowed or divorced and they don't um, no longer feel the need for contraception because they're not going to have children. I'm, I'm past that point in my life. Right. And so they start dating. It's a different world out there. They don't think to ask. And then it's very difficult to diagnose because a lot of the symptoms for HIV AIDS go along with the normal aging process, the tiredness, the the colds and not quite being up to up to par with mm -hmm. things. And first of all, it's not really something that age group would ask their doctor for. Okay, so what, what advice would you give to people to uh, help protect themselves and just be smart about it? Mm, number one, does it matter when you go for your yearly? I believe now they passed a law that requires Florida doctors to now administer an AIDS test. It okay. used to be just for the pregnant women. If you were pregnant, you automatically had one. Now they pass the law, so I would always ask for one. Okay. It doesn't hurt if it's gonna be part of your uh, care. I would become a little more familiar with the um, methods of protection that are out there. There are now female condoms 
There's different kinds of products available. And talk to your doctor about what's appropriate for your age group. What, do mo what are most women using or what are most men using? It's an uh, education thing. It is a very much an education thing. You know, HIV AIDS is not in the headlines like it used to be. So do you find that people think out of sight, out of mind, or this is hmm. something that, you know, I don't do. Have I to think, think about yeah, it they don't think about it too much, and because it's become a chronic, manageable disease, mm -hmm. there's all the different drugs or cocktails that people can take, and they're living longer. I think it has kind of just people become complacent, but now it's on the rise again. So, so we hear from you, compassion from the community at large, and take charge of your own health. Correct. Ask the difficult questions. Don't be afraid to ask a potential partner his or her status. Because Correct. Absolutely, because you are correct. Because your life could be changed in a way that's, that uh, really for some people is probably unimaginable, but being responsible, I'm hearing responsibility yes, under absolutely. all of that. And it's hard when you're not um, used to, you know, used to going to the doctor, the doctor checks you out, oh, you're okay, fine. Do you have any questions? You kind of sit there, no, not really. And then after you walk out of courses when you always think about what should I be ask, asking, but we need to be, make an effort to be more take a little bit more responsibility for our So if personal. someone's watching and they have questions and they're not quite sure they want to call their doctor yet, mm -hmm. can they get the information they need at Heart of Florida United Way? Absolutely. If we don't have it, we will direct them okay. to an agency. Also, your local health department is a great source. They do free HIV testing. A lot of the agencies do free HIV testing. Strictly confidential. No one has to know. And you, get your, you can get your results pretty quickly. And then from there... But definitely in this day and age with um, all the information and media out there, if I was dating and I had gotten to that point in my relationship, I would definitely be asking my potential partner what his status is. So be your own advocate, be responsible, call and get information. The information is available because the numbers in the state of Florida are frightening. They are very frightening. They're frightening. And HIV AIDS is not going away. No, ma'am, it's not. Okay. Enid, thank you very much. Thank for you very much. We will be right back. Don't go away. The Place of Comfort provides a nurturing environment that empowers individuals and families to take charge of their lives. Here to tell us more is the Place of Comfort's Executive Director, Karen Yeager. Karen, welcome. Thank you for having me. A few minutes ago, we heard about all of the agencies that Heart of Florida United Way refers people to for services when they are HIV, have been identified mm -hmm. as having HIV AIDS, and yours is one of them. Yes. Tell me how that whole thing got started. Back a million years ago. Uh, how far back is that? <laughs> 1988. Okay. Uh, I actually attended a, uh, a meeting at my church that I was invited to about this new disease that had been killing uh, essentially so many young gay men uh, sat through it and uh, I somehow feel that God might have been tapping me on the shoulder saying, hey, this is something you need to do. Uh, so I, it was not something that was affected yeah. your life on a personal level. You just said something needs to be done and yes. I say I'm the I one. I say I'm the one. So tell us what the place of comfort, how it started and what it has become. Sure. Um, after years of volunteer work and just trying to educate and be a community leader, I um, actually got my 501c3 for the Place of Comfort in uh, 2001. Uh, from there, again, smarted, started in an a, a office large enough for a closet. Okay. Just, you know, but we now provide s both medical, non-medical case management, uh, food pantry, nutritional supplements, medical transportation so the consumers can get to their doctor's appointments, uh, as well as all the community resources and referrals we can possibly have. Now what does what does non-medical case management mean? How does that right. work? Um, 
It can be confusing for even us, but non-medical would be where we're not dealing with the doctors or nurses. We're able to get their eligibility completed, um, so they might be able to be eligible for the different uh, programs that are funded by Heart of Florida United Way mm -hmm. um, through uh, the Orange County government as well, through Part A, which is different funding sources we have. Now, it's called the place of comfort, but you're not a residential no. facility. No. Okay. Actually, place is an acronym for persons living with AIDS and caring for each other. Oh, so okay. it started off just sort of being the friendly place. We wanted to sort of uh, really affect change within women and children back there in the, you know, early 2000s because there wasn't an awful lot quickly came uh, a, a clinic that did sort of respond to the need of the women and children who weren't being addressed. Are you seeing the composition of the people who walk through your doors change? Has that changed over the years? It really has. So we, who comes now? We really see many more women infected, uh, the minorities, uh, where it seemed to be a Caucasian gay men's disease early on. We are now seeing so many more African American uh, and Hispanic, and with that, so many more women. Mm -hmm. We've really gotten a handle on um, children being born with HIV because of the phenomenal medicine we have. And how does how does someone get involved? Like you heard the call. If someone is watching and they want to help you continue to do what you do, you can. App, we everyone needs volunteer, whether it's the Place of Comfort or any of our sister agencies. Volunteer have a food drive, uh, donate. Uh, you can reach us via uh, email, uh, websites, pick up the phone. And of course, we know you are uh, an agency funded by Heart of Florida United yes. Way, so people can contribute to Absolutely. you that way. Absolutely, What's the next phase for a, the place of comfort? We're probably going to be expanding a little bit more into prevention, which even though we do outreach uh, now and testing, we're going to be going uh, a little bit deeper into that. The only way we're going to ever get a handle on this disease is really making sure everybody knows their status mm -hmm. and too many people don't know their status. They aren't tested. You do testing? Yes. So what does that involve for someone who says, okay, I think I might need to do this and they walk through your doors, what happens? For us, we do a oral swab, um, which is very uninvasive. We ask some questions, we speak with them, we try to identify, you know, what did bring them through those doors, what mm -hmm. type of behavior. Uh, again, it's scary. It can be scary. Sure. You know. Sure. But uh, again, we try to make it very comfortable, a place of comfort, to where they can, they'll come back for their test results, and we can educate a little bit more. Without education, we're surely going to perish. And it's confidential? Oh, yes. So, you know, because that could be a worry for some people. Yes. When you go into the education component, what questions are you asked most often by people? Uh, isn't, th isn't this handable disease? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, it's handable, but it's just not curable. Okay. Not yet. It can be handled, but yes. there is not a cure. And we've talked about that yes. earlier. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, Thank you. Are you seeing, what, what's the biggest difference you've seen since you've started this and the people who come through the doors? What are you hearing from them? I am hearing that there's still a lack of education mm. and thus we all need to be armed with the education and the facts, okay. uh, every one of us from grandmas to teenagers and everything in between. We need to know. So, you know, there's a, there's a saying that knowledge is power, yes. but I've heard it contradicted. Applied knowledge is the real power. So it's not That's what you true. know, it's what you do with what you know after you find out. And yes. hopefully this episode of Healthy Connections has gone a long way in educating people about HIV AIDS and letting them know about folks like you who are uh, picking up the gauntlet and running with it. We all can make a change. The place of comfort. Now you have four locations yes. in four different counties, and what are those counties? Uh, our main office is in Seminole County. We have a wonderful office in Orange County, Lake, and Osceola. You're so busy. <laughs> <laughs> you're where, am I trying to figure, where are we? We're where everywhere. Are we? 
Karen Yeager, thank you so much for joining us and for all the work you do in this community. Thank you. The Place of Comfort. We will be back right after this. As we've seen in this episode of Healthy Connections, the state of Florida and Orange County in particular have alarmingly high numbers when it comes to HIV AIDS. But we also heard some good news. There are a lot of organizations around dedicated to helping people who have this disease. Take care of yourself, take responsibility for yourself, and ask questions. We want you to be around to have more Healthy Connections. I'm Anetta Wilson. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.